Okay, we have a tricky integral from the MIT integration B 2023 quarterfinals round three problem two. We have the integral from zero to infinity, hyperbolic secant squared of x plus tan x dx. Now on paper, I tried this one a bunch of different ways, but nothing seemed to really work. There's too many problems having, you know, something complicated and put it into the hyperbolic secant. Tangent doesn't work well with the hyperbolic secant. So I found a lot of problems that way. But one thing I can notice this whole thing is actually going to be an even function. Just noticing that what's inside is going to be odd, but with the outer function being even, that's going to make everything even. So what that's going to allow me to do is I can change the bounds. Instead of going from zero to infinity, I can write this as going from minus infinity to infinity. And then I just need to bring the one half out front. Usually we do this trick the other way when we've got symmetric bounds, around zero and we've got an even function, we'd bring a two out and change this to zero. I'm just doing that same thing in reverse. And now for my next step, what I wanna do is let's just deal with this tangent function. I have a formula I derived in a previous video and I think it's gonna help us with this. Okay, so I think it was just one video back that we derived this formula. And so if you wanna see how this is done, I'll provide a link in the description to this one because it's pretty interesting how we get to this. But assuming we already know this, Cotangent is pretty closely related to tangent. So I want to use this to rewrite tangent. For tangent, what we can do is using the, um, use the complementary angle formula. So tan x is going to be the same thing as cotangent pi over two minus x. And so then with this, all I need to do is take the input and plug it into our sum here. And so now we're going to have this sum, but we're going to have one over pi over two minus x plus n pi. Then on this thing, I can just pull a minus sign out of it just to kind of reverse the sign and everything. So when we do that, now how it's gonna look is now the X is gonna have a positive on it, have a minus sign. I'm gonna group these constant terms together. So we'll write it as minus N pi plus pi over two. So for the moment, we'll use this as the way to express tan X, but now I wanna kind of expand it. We want all of this stuff. So for an expression for X plus tan X, well, adding an X is pretty easy. We're gonna have X, we'll have this thing, but I'm gonna leave some space for a moment. Um, yeah, let's just write it right here. And then with this space, I'll do something kind of weird and unnecessary. Let's just have a minus zero on there. So we're not changing it, but we have, we're showing we've got a constant there. But what's the whole purpose of me taking X plus tan X and writing it here in a much more complicated way? Well, I'm doing that in order to set this up to use Glasser's master theorem. Okay, so now what I've done is rewritten the integral, plugging in our value for x plus tan x that we found on the previous board. And now we have Glasser's master theorem on the board. Now I went over this or a simplified version of this in a previous video where we didn't have some of these details. So I just kind of want to go over and make sure we're clear on everything. First of all, what we didn't have in the other video, we have Cauchy's principal value on both these. So all that means is if our integrals were divergent, we could extend that and still put a value on them. But it's not really going to be applicable here. So you can kind of, when you have a convergent integral, you can just kind of ignore that. Now, the other thing that might be confusing about this, especially if you saw the other video in the simplified version, there is another piece of it, the Cauchy, I forget the um, full name or I can't pronounce it. But in that other video, we have basically the same formula, ignoring Cauchy's principal value. And the input here was different. It was just x minus a over x. And maybe to make it a little more consistent, let's write it instead as x minus bx, just because we already used a over here. Now, this is actually the same thing. The way it works is you can do this. This formula is more flexible, right? We're covering a lot of things here. Like if you think about when a equals 0, that piece just goes away. So we have the x here minus here. And then this is a sum, but if you think about all these terms, it's saying this here is just one term, but it still fits this. If you think of the c to the n, c sub n value, if you think about this as zero, then you just have an x here. If you think about this constant in the numerator just always being this b. And one thing, a lot of times this formula is written, this upper bound is flexible as well. You can write this like maybe like a big N. So it doesn't have to go to infinity. It can be some finite number of terms. Well, this would be the case. We could write this right here as the sum from N equals one to one. So that way we get just one term where the 
B value is always going to be B. It's not going to vary based on N. We do need the B value greater than zero. Otherwise, you kind of don't have the minus sign anymore. And then we just have the X in the numerator. So this is just a very narrow case of this broader formula right here. So now that we've gone over that, get this out of the way. And now let's figure out how does this apply to the integral we're dealing with right now? Well, looking at our integral, we could just put this N back and look at the big N value as infinity because we definitely have an infinite sum here. We have a problem with this lower bound technically, but we'll deal with that later. Um, this A value, this is why I just created this zero. I mean, you could kind of just, if you're used to it, you could just kind of skip it, but we want to make, I'm just trying to be explicit and clear that this, our A value here is just going to be zero. And we can think of this kind of more complicated expression here as the C sub N and this being like our B sub N, but it's just a constant. So in order to see that our integral matches this right here, the only thing we really need to think about a little bit is this lower bound here. And then if we can figure that out, this thing just simplifies all the way down to just an X and secant, hyperbolic secant squared of X is something we know how to integrate. So now dealing with this lower bound here, if we think about this C sub N value, when we just start plugging in values, it's kind of weird because usually we're used to starting at like zero or one, and now we're going all the way to minus infinity. But if we were to start plugging in terms and just looking at our like C sub N values, if we plug a zero into this thing, just focusing on this, it's just gonna be pi over two. And we plug a one in and we get three pi over two. And we plug a two in and we get five pi over two. And you can see this is gonna go on getting an odd number here in the numerator. But this isn't really everything we want because we also wanna look at negative terms. So assuming we did this all the way to infinity and then come back and look at minus one, when you plug minus one into this thing, you get minus pi over two. And you plug in minus two and you get minus three pi over two, et cetera. And this will keep going like this. Now I'm sure it's unnecessary to do this, but one thing it does just kind of gives you a feel that like if we kind of reorder these, this is still just, we just have a bunch of different constant terms that are varying based on N. If you kind of reorder them or write this a different way, it's definitely going to meet this criteria. So I don't think you really need to get this to N equals one. This is actually a really flexible thing where you could have it a bunch of different ways. It's just saying we have a sum of a bunch of these different terms in this form. But if you really wanted to write it with the index starting at one, you could do it and I'll just do that. I'll just show that really quick because I was kind of obsessed with it as well. So I might as well write the thing down. And now that we've shown that this works and this meets this criteria here, we can just use this formula and go ahead and simplify it. So what we're gonna get is one half the integral is still going from minus infinity to infinity of just our f of x. So this reduces all the way down to hyperbolic secant squared x dx. But now we just have a simple integral. So let's just do this one and finish it off. Integral of hyperbolic secant is the same thing as regular secant. In this case, it's going to be, this is just going to become hyperbolic tangent of x. And we need to evaluate from minus infinity to infinity. And actually right here, I could have used the property of even functions to kind of reverse this, bring a two up front, change this to zero. So let's just do it now. So if we did this and change this to a zero and brought a two out front, that's just gonna cancel out here. And so then we just have hyperbolic tangent from zero to infinity. Evaluating this, it's kind of easier. Sometimes it's hard to remember these values. So let's just write out our definition of hyperbolic tangent. It's gonna be e to the x minus e minus x over e to the x plus e minus x, just thinking about it as cinch over cosh. When you evaluate this at infinity, because of the e minus x, these two terms here are going to zero. So you end up with e to the x over e to the x. That's just one. Evaluating at zero, let's just do it out carefully. You're gonna have here e to the zero minus e to the zero. So you have like zero over zero, but luckily you're not dividing by zero as this is gonna be like one plus one in the denominator or zero over two, this goes away. And so for our final solution, we just get one. Okay, so really good one there from MIT. I'm not sure how you do it without Glasser's master theorem. Clearly in the integration B, they don't, it's not just confined to like calc two integrals. Because I have no idea how you do this with just like U sub and integration by parts. Maybe I'm missing something. Let me know in the comments if you were able to do it that way, but I just didn't see a simple way to do it. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.